Welcome back, everybody. It's time with another video for you. It's been a while since I've done one, but uh, one I'm going to show you today is uh, kind of interesting. Um, what's in front of the camera right now is uh, two, C uh, two circuit boards out of a Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, this is one that has not been modified in any way. You'll see this big um, silver box here is the RF modulator for it, and this is the PPU unit, and oh, look, there's no CPU in here. That's because I took it out. Um, and here is another one. This is one I, this is actually out of my original Nintendo I had back when I was a kid. And, uh, it had gone bad. And, uh, when I was making my portable NES back in 2001, I, uh, used this board, um, for a mock-up first because it was bad. I knew I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't ruin anything. But, uh, so I still had this board and I thought, well, maybe the CPU is still good out of this one. So I first tried this, what I'm doing right now with the CPU out of this board, but I found that it didn't work. Anyway, so the reason I'm doing this is um, you probably are familiar that I have a Nintendo uh, versus Unisys uh, versus Dual System. It's a Nintendo Red Tent, many people call it. There's my son Edgar there, and uh, in those there are essentially two NES systems on one board, and you have a Nintendo processor and a PPU unit. PPU unit in it. Now the PPU in it is a special RGB one, um, and each one is different for each game. But the the uh, CPU in it is the standard recall, recall, whatever, however you say it. Um, this is the this is one right out of it right here. This is an actual uh, versus system one here. Let's see if you can get it to focus. It's an RP an RP two AO AO three, and here is one out of a Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a later version of it because it came out later. It's an RP two AO three G. This is a later revision of it. Um, so this is the one out of this board. It goes right here. And this is the one out of my Versus system. And uh, so uh, Joe Senegaglia, um, he needed some more CPUs for his Versus system. And so I said, well, let's see if we can use ones out of a Nintendo Entertainment System. And that's what I did here. So I took the one out of my Versus system, and I installed the one out of this Nintendo board into it. And you can see it's working just fine. So there you go. The color's really bright because of my camera. But you can see, if we get the angle right there, it looks better. So you see the game works perfectly fine. If I coin it up, everything works just fine. Especially my one-handed playing. So there you go. It's working. Uh, uh, so now, I'll just show you the board. So here is the Versus dual system board. It's the same Versus or Unisystem. Okay, so here is the uh, Nintendo processor. It's in this socket right here. And here's the PPU unit for Super Versus Super Mario Brothers. The other side I have uh, Versus Castlevania. It's got a special daughter card to have more memory in it. So we can just swap this back in. I'll just go up here, doing this one-handed. There's the Nintendo CPU, and then the other thing you gotta make sure you get this in the right way. So put it back in. This is my original one. Pins on this end. All right, so that's back together. And slide the board back in. Kind of hard to do this one here. Now, we pray that I didn't mess anything up in that process. <laughs> here we go. Everything's working. You never know. He might just mess something up. So we're back to the original Nintendo Versus System CPU. Okay. So, oh, while we're talking about that, I'll show you my... Um, Here's my portable NES I made years ago, right here. It's gigantic, but you know, I made it a long time ago. Turn it on, it has good batteries in it. 
See, it works. Most of it's the monitor, the space in this thing, because back then the uh, LCDs were much larger than the ones you can buy nowadays. Okay, so there's that. And what else are we going to talk about? Oh, my uh, surgery. So I had surgery on my uh, other hand about oh, two and a half weeks ago. You can see right here. You can st still see it's a little bit just dead skin on the top, but this hand's done. And it feels pretty good. It's still bruised in this area right here. And this hand here is almost completely healed. So there. So both my hands are doing pretty good. Oh, and uh, when it comes to desoldering these chips, um, I want to show you this. I found this works really well. A technique I had. So normally I use my desoldering uh, gun to do it. And uh, Let's see if I can do I can't do this one-handedly. But uh, what I normally what I've been doing now is I take my um, rework station, use the hot air, and I'll be holding the hot air like just before the next pin that I'm gonna do, and I just keep sucking it, sucking the solder as I go along, and I'm able to remove it really quickly and easily without mangling any of the pins of the chips or or lifting any traces. So um, having one of these is great. So I can't recommend it enough. And of course, there's that Radio Shack desoldering iron I got recently. So that's it, guys. Um, I got a lot of work left to do on stuff, um, and I don't have a lot of time. So, but I'll try to do more videos as time goes by. And uh, so, Joe, I'll send you one of these CPUs. See how you, how you like it, and we'll go from there. Thanks.